the Guyana Conference of Seventh-day Adventists, in collaboration with the Linden International Reunion Association, presents Reset. This is a conversation exploring realistic, everyday solutions-oriented empowerment techniques on issues of health, relationships, and building strong families. Join us and be part of this innovative, instructive, and inspirational initiative which will provide the exact ideas you need to reset your life. This is Reset. Welcome to Critical Conversations, a series of discussions intended to inform and inspire new thoughts and new behaviors. I'm your host, Dr. Owen Carroll, and it is my privilege to welcome Dr. Simone Walton and Dr. Era Liverpool to today's discussion on separation anxiety. This is the second episode in our series on mental health. Doctors Walton and Liverpool, welcome. Would you please introduce yourselves so the audience knows who you are? I'll let the lady go first, Dr. Walton. Well, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, so I'm Dr. Simone Walton. I am a uh, Guyanese born kid. Uh, my parents immigrated to the US when I was just a little girl. Um, and I'm so excited about the privilege to share here with you all today. Um, I currently uh, run my own private practice. It's called Core Issues. And reason for that being the C honors my uh, late father, Carlton Walton. Um, and the Core Issues, it, all the research shows, right, that when people exhibit with certain mental health challenges, there is usually something or things that are the root causes, right, um, of those challenges. Um, I've been in this mental health space for a number of years. Uh, I've also uh, been a product of the legal space. So I'm happy to be here with you all today and look forward to just sharing uh, in this conversation. Thank you so much. And thank You're you, welcome. Dr. Walton. And I am also uh, glad to be here with Dr. Carroll and Dr. Walton and um, looking forward to this conversation. I am a pastor, first of all. I am pastoring two churches here in the Lake Region Conference of Seventh-day Adventists. But for the last 22 years, I have been in private practice. Um, it's called Clear Choices Counseling and Psychiatry, uh, a full service outpatient psychiatric clinic. I am the president and we have a staff of eight. Um, we deal with all kinds of um, clients with various disorders. So I'm glad to be a part of this conversation, this discussion um, with today's emphasis on separation anxiety. Thank you so much. And why don't we go straight into uh, a situation that uh, is very, very common. There is a 12 year old young man, Johnny, who was left by his um, mom to, to be with his grandmother. Uh, and the mom migrated uh, to another country for a better life. Uh, Johnny uh, was told to take care of his younger sibling, a six-year-old, uh, since mommy will, when she goes away, she will send for them. Interesting enough, uh, six, the six-year-old sibling was a very outgoing child, loved to attend school, enjoyed going to school, slept well at night, typical thing of any six-year-old. And then sometime later, the grandmother noticed that uh, this young man was not interested in going to school and had problems sleeping. Uh, what do you think may be taking place here? Well, uh, first, of, go ahead, first of all, I'll take it, I'll take the question. Uh, first of all, I think it's good to note that there has been a change since mom left. But I should say that we should understand that there are some things that normally happen uh, to children when parents 
are not around, whether for a short period of time or for a long period of time. So we don't want to get confused with that which is normal, um, which the child may show some anxiety, um, fussing, um, not wanting to follow rules, um, not listening, not being obedient. Um, children exhibit these normally if somebody uh, steps out. But in this case, and this is the word, the behavior of this six-year-old is prolonged. It's of a longer duration and it's getting worse. So the question then is, what is separation anxiety? It is where a child can begin to experience distress after being removed out of the vicinity of the caregiver. Uh, this can happen not only so we understand we're not dealing just with people who went abroad. For example, if somebody lives in region one and gets a job in region 10 and had to leave the children behind, uh, those children can begin to experience se separation anxiety. It can also happen if uh, the caregiver has a, a prolonged hospital stay or maybe even the case of death, but it's the changes of not being able to sleep, being afraid when there's no reason to be. And sometimes this may even be accompanied with physiological challenges such as headaches and stomach aches. But in short, it's a child being overly worrying and anxious because that relationship is no longer, uh, the person is no longer present. Thank you so much. Uh, Dr. Walton, do you have anything to add to just the definition, if you may, of separation anxiety. Yeah, I, I um, you know, just to follow on a bit on what uh, Dr. Liverpool said, right? It's really natural for young children to, you know, show kind of hallmarks of separation anxiety, right? So it, it's attributed to them really feeling anxious about saying goodbye. Right? And it usually starts like around the child's first birthday, and it may reoccur until about the age of four. And so some of those things may show up like crying, right? Clinginess. Uh, they may throw tantrums, right? Um, however, where you have a child is going beyond, right? first of all, beyond this age of four, and where you see their reactions are intensifying, right? Intensifying, so it's going on for weeks, right? It starts days, then we're into weeks, then we're seeing months, and, you know, uh, the refusal to do what's known as, right, the normal activities, right, of daily living. It's starting to interfere with that. This child is now moving in to a much larger issue, right, which is separation anxiety disorder. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. As we kind of look a little closer at this situation, this condition, how, uh, what other set of um, uh, symptoms or behaviors uh, can uh, and maybe there's some, not just behaviors, there may even be some physiological uh, type of, if you want to call them symptoms. What else, if a parent is observing their child, are some of the other things that may not have been mentioned before, if there's any at all? Um, I think some things to kind of pay attention to is really uh, a child being so fearful that um, the child believes that something is going to happen to the parent outside of that child's presence, right? So they may be worried about um, their parent becoming sick or their parent becoming hurt. Um, and then, of course, we are in this time of a pandemic, right? So it's exacerbated even more for children because many of them have probably experience family members dying um, or getting really sick, right? Uh, and then you, then the kid may really just fear that, um, that something's going to happen to them, 
that they're outside of their parents' presence, right? Maybe uh, some, maybe they're going to get lost and they're never going to be able to be found. Uh, maybe they worry about being like kidnapped, right? Uh, and so you have these two children and you have this six-year-old that's really exhibiting um, some symptoms and it's starting to interfere with, at six, right? A child is really excited about learning because they're spending a lot of time in school. So for a child not to want to do something that's a normal daily activity of their functioning, this is really a challenge that needs to be paid serious attention to. In addition to that, thank you, Dr. Walton. In addition to that, I think it, we may encounter that children may be different. For example, uh, temperament uh, plays a role in separation anxiety. And, and sometimes you may find one child having more of a natural resi resilience than the other child. So age is a factor. Um, here we have, it's the displaced by the younger, younger child. And one of the things that I think um, we should note also is that sometimes the person left to care for the child may not even understand what's happening and may have some responses that we may consider draconian. Uh, for example, they may want to spank the child, put them in a room, you know, do different things that they think it's just disciplining of the child because they're not recognizing this child is experiencing something that is not normal. Thank you so much. Now, you mentioned age, and I was thinking of that. Um, one is a 12-year-old, uh, the other much younger, six-year-old. Um, what do you think or why do you think it is not um, even though both children, both children are exposed to the same external factor, in this case, the separation from a mom. But, but why is it that the younger one is experiencing this separation anxiety and the older one? What, what are possible causes? The age is, but what, what about the older child that is preventing that child from having this experience? So I think Dr. Liverpool mentioned something um, when he shared with us last where he said resilience, right? That older child may have more internal resilience. That older child also may have been prepared more than the younger one, right? For this, this major shift, right? Of the parent leaving. Right? Um, because the older child understands a bit more. They're still, they're not mature, right? They're still growing in their maturity, but they are going to understand more than a six-year-old. Um, and then the older child is being stronger, right? For the sibling, right? The older child is taking on this adult responsibility of being stronger. And it's like, you know, I don't, I don't want to, if I'm upset, my sibling's gonna be upset. And already, right, they're seeing that their sibling is exhibiting kind of this refusal to go to school. And it's really, it's not just, I don't wanna go to school. It's they have a fear of being in school, right? That's how extreme this is. Um, you know, just like they may not even wanna go to sleep because they may fear not waking up. Uh, and so, yeah, I think there's some kids that age matters, some have more resilience than others, I'm being strong for my siblings, so it could be a variety of factors. What, what do you think, Dr. Liverpool? Thank you. In addition to that, I think we should also st uh, state that sometimes children copy from their parents, and some parents in and of themselves are very anxious in how they, you know, conduct themselves. And sometimes children tend to gravitate to what a particular parent, I'm not suggesting this mother who left was like that, but we're talking about, you know, caregivers. And we should uh, not fail to recognize that children often live in an environment and when they see something, they may mimic it. So for those parents who are listening out there, I want them to understand how they present to their children, how they themselves deal with these issues may have some effect on how the child deals, deals with it. Thank you so much. Now, 
what are some of the practical things that a parent can do to help a child who is experiencing separation anxiety? I would think, first of all, in this particular scenario we have, we have a grandmother. And one of the practical things that the grandmother can do is understand the value of reassuring those two children under her care. Reassuring them in terms of their value and also reassuring them in terms of how they feel towards the mother who has gone for a better life. So practically, it is one has to get away from, you know, you're a big boy, you shouldn't be crying, you know, you need to be in school. The normal things that how we would respond to children, we have to be more caring towards those children. Secondly, I think we have to pay greater attention, we have to give a little more detail to just who this child is, as opposed to taking a position, well, your brother is not doing this, why are you doing it? So reassuring and being specific to this particular child's needs. Yeah, and I think to follow on with that, it's so important to listen, right? Don't say to the child, don't think about it. Don't talk about it. Mommy is coming back. I mean, quite honestly, you don't know that. You know, God forbid if something happens to mom, right? Then that is forever registered in that child's brain that, mm, see, grandma said mom was coming back. Now I can't trust you. So listen to the child meet the child where the child is at. So allow them to talk about their feelings, talk about, you know, what their concerns are, talk about their worries. Do not say to them, do not think about it. That's just not possible. They're thinking about it. They miss their parent, right? And then that modeling too that Dr. Liverpool talked about, right? Where children take on not only their parents, right, but their caregivers, they take on their environment, the behavior that they're a part of, right, their whole system that surrounds them. So if the adults are calm during the separation, right, and if the adults are reassuring, the child is more than likely to also be calm and to feel reassured, right? And then praise your child for their accomplishments, right? So talk about their daily, right? Activities that they have to be part of. So ask, how was school? Oh, how are your friends? What are you all talking about, right? So this is just listening and respecting their feelings, right? Keeping calm and supporting them during their activities and what they have to do. And then you're also doing it to those that are listening to this, right? You are educating yourself about this issue and we are bringing these conversations to you. So this is also part of it, educating yourself about separation anxiety disorder. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Now, I was thinking about this situation for this child and um, was wondering, can this condition of separation anxiety seen in a six-year-old um, continue later in life and show up uh, as, a, uh, as if not dealt with? Um, I think that's a great question. And the answer is yes. If not adequately and effectively addressed, uh, that person can be prone to depression, eating disorders, may develop some social phobias and some behavioral disorders. Uh, research is bountiful with these outcomes. So we shouldn't take it lightly. In, in other words, we're not saying a child that has separation anxiety will become a depressed adult, but it's very possible if it is not dealt with effectively, you may have an adult who is depressed, prone to depression, eating disorders, may develop some social phobias and behavioral disorders. Yeah. Anything um, else to add? I, I would say that everything said, of course, is on point and true, right? And you become an adult that can be extremely anxious. Right. Everything will then make you anxious, 
many things will cause you worry, mm. right? You wouldn't be able to effectively manage um, stress and self-regulate, right? Because that's a, that's a great and such an important skill that's learned in childhood, mm. self-regulation. And when a child is experiencing this disorder, part of it is, right, teaching them and providing them the supports to regulate themselves. So, um, you know, some other tips, right? Uh, offer a child some semblance of uh, age appropriate control. Right? So maybe, uh, okay, you miss mom, write a note to mom. Or maybe we call mom so you can either FaceTime or you can see mom on WhatsApp. They can see you so that the child knows that, right, mom is still yes. present, right? Mm -hmm. They know still present. Uh, for the school, right, grandma should speak to the school, right, about what's going on with the child. And so that the school is aware and teachers maybe can provide a safe space for this child because maybe the child is going along in their you know, daily school routine, and all of a sudden they're just sad. They just kind of off to themselves. So, you know, give that child, create safe spaces for children in school, right? They can be called like calming spaces where they can just sit for a minute, you know, and they can have a moment to just kind of regulate their emotional temperatures and then they can go back in, right? With their friends and re-engage again um, and just provide reassurance, 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 right? With family members, with their peers um, and just where a child is like, okay, they may have cried a lot one day, but the next day, not so much crying, not so much clean as, wow, you know, grandma really appreciates that, you know, look at you, you, you went on into the school, you've had a great day, you've shared with me, right? Yeah, just really reward their efforts and, you know, give them some compliments. It's important. Yeah, make them feel special. Thank awesome. you. One of the things too, I think we should say, and I know time is going, but one of the things I think we should say is don't be afraid to reach out to professionals. Uh, I'm, and I'm, I'm speaking directly to the guy in the situation in that we not out here, we have readily, we can pick up the phone, go online, and, you know, get a therapist. You may not have that in Guyana, but seek out locally who may be the people around. So if it, if it gets beyond you, you, you get that professional assistance. Thank you so much, Doctors Walton and Liverpool, for a very lively, spirited, and informative conversation. To those of you who are watching this video, thank you so much for joining us. And I hope that this conversation has provided you with relevant information that will inspire new thoughts and new behaviors to effectively cope with separation anxiety. I want to wish you good health, peace, happiness, and God's richest blessings. Bye. Thank Take you. good care, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.